And he said, Steve, I'm struggling because I can't get a job right now. And so there's all these startups that I've been approaching, which I'm perfect for, and I can't get them to hire me. And because I'm too old and he's younger than me. Mm -hmm. Did you push record? Thanks so much for tuning into Second Act TV. Today, our focus returns to recreating, reinventing life after 50. And I am thrilled to have our guest with us all the way from Canada today, Steve Dotto. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. I love what you're doing with this channel. Well, I love what you're doing with your channels. In fact, I don't even know where, how to really best introduce you. You are such a character and you, you're in a space that is, frankly, is foreign to me. I've had to learn so much about that with what I'm doing and how I recreate it. And that's what I want to focus on today. You are, well, you were a, a executive producer and host of Dotto Tech, a syndicated show in Canada, which uh, I believe has you known now as what Canada's uh, biggest geek or no, 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 not favorite biggest. <laughs> I, that, that was kind of my tagline. I was Canada's favorite geek because I don't believe there's an official designation. So I just claimed it. Perfect. And then you, well, th that ended and you recreate it. And now you are a YouTube star. He is officially a YouTube star in our space. <laughs> oh, okay. That's so that's, that, you know, it's uh, like you spending as much time in the broadcast world and in the network television world. Um, in 2010, 2011, I stopped doing the TV series. We did it for about 15 years here in Canada. So we had a we had a long run and it was it was great. Uh, but the type of content that I do is I teach people how to use technology, how to how to uh, use it in their lives. That's kind of what we've always done. Our show was a how to computer show. And so <clears throat> there was a fairly natural transition to YouTube, which I actually didn't see for a little while. When I stopped doing the TV show, it was just, it was time to wrap it up. And I thought I could do almost anything I wanted to. There's a lot of ego attached to having a successful run and you know, that sort of stuff. Um, but discovering the world of YouTube and reinventing myself at that age, um, after having you know been in one industry that long was, has been a fascinating journey. Yep. And for anybody, uh, for anybody that comes from any of the traditional media spaces, the transition into the, the social media spaces is 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 really eye opening and and changes our perspective on a lot of things. In, in some ways, it's really liberating. Uh, other ways, it can be a bit intimidating. But yeah, but I I, I tend to lean into the liberation side. I really like <laughs> I really like what I've learned in the last little while. Well, I mean, I love your story because not only I mean, one, you make technology fun, <laughs> and we've talked off camera. You know, I get very frustrated with it, and 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 I I put myself down, and then you. You already, you know, yelled at me about that. <laughs> I, I well, I, I don't, I don't like the negative self talk. I hate it when our generation sits there and says, "I'm too stupid to do this," and these sort of, because it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. You're not too stupid to do it. You may be too lazy to do it. No, <laughs> perfectly legitimate. Uh, you might not feel you have the time. You might not have the patience to do it. That again, legitimate. But you're not too stupid. And when we start saying we're too stupid, a we start to believe it. But b uh, the community that we should be still providing leadership for starts to believe it. We end up marginalizing ourselves, which I think is a is a is a huge huge issue. But that's a, that's a little bit more philo philosophical discussion. We <laughs> we should talk a little bit about how how YouTube and how how our generation looks and and and, uh, and and people that are looking at these different social platforms. I think that the lessons that I learned on YouTube, and I'm sure you are in the process of learning, are fascinating. And here's the number one thing that we need to understand with YouTube. I think for us, mm -hmm. is most people who are watching this right now think YouTube is a broadcast medium. It's a platform for delivery. Would you agree? Most people think that, as I did, but I've learned what it is, but I'm going to let you say it because you're the expert. <laughs> well, in fact, it's a search engine. Search engine. At the end of the day, is is you have to, if you look at it as a search engine, as the place you go to find what you're looking for, which creates an incredibly clean relationship between broadcaster, between us, and the platform with YouTube. You know, if, if you look at it, if you think about what, what's your journey when you go to YouTube for anything, what's the process you go through? You ask a um, question. Yeah, it's, it all starts with a question. And so if you think about your journey into YouTube, it all starts with that question, and then YouTube serves you up a series of, uh, of responses based on the, what their algorithm tells you, you know, you're gonna be most interested in. But what YouTube's most interested in in serving your name to somebody or serving your video is they want them to find what they're looking for. 
So our relationship is completely clean with YouTube. Unlike Google, if you think about how you get discovered on Google, there's all this black hat, white hat search engine stuff about how you get ranked in search. That's really a difficult thing for us to kind of figure out. But in YouTube, it's so simple. They ask a question. If you answer the question, then you're delivering what YouTube wants, and YouTube will then reward you by recommending your videos to more and more people, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And the relationship with your audience becomes so easy as well because uh, you're basically delivering to them exactly what they've asked for, so they enter your video with intent as opposed to like a Facebook feed where it's interruptional. You know, you're in Facebook probably avoiding your responsibilities and this stream of videos is going through and nobody, you know, it's the algorithm deciding what you, what you should get. You're being socially engineered the whole time and we at some level recognize that. Interesting. But in YouTube, we're not. In YouTube, we're looking for something and where it's being delivered. If you stop and think about it, in our broadcast career, who is our customer? Well, the, the executives, the, the, the programmer, the, pro, yeah, product, yeah, the, the pro, programming development department, which I hate. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or, or sponsors, if, you, if, you've got a, if you've got a show like that. Exactly. Or, yeah, or there's, uh, there's just all of these people who stand between you and your audience. Mm-hmm. And when we're making television, the last person that the typical television creator thinks about is the audience. Yep. Because... They're so far down the chain that you have to you have to satisfy so many people that you really can't satisfy them. Now, I, I, obviously, you have to have an entertaining product and a valuable product, et cetera, but they aren't your customer. That's right. When you create a YouTube video, the audience is your customer. Mm-hmm. And I got to tell you, when I recognized that difference, it was an epiphany for me. And it... It re-energized me. I was probably burnt out doing television for that long a time, you know, just basically, you know, just comp- making compromise after compromise with everything that I did in order to keep my brand moving ahead, to keep my team employed, to keep myself employed. It was just a series of compromises. Um, and I didn't feel like real leadership at any point along that line. However, once I started to do YouTube, uh, although my audience was theoretically smaller, although eminently measurable, which is phenomenal. Yes. Um, all of a sudden, the people who watched my video got to be the people who I was making it for. And so it made it simple to create great content, as long as you do one thing. And I always tell every YouTube content creator that says, how do you build a successful channel? You do one thing. You ask your community what they want. You talk to them. You engage with them. The YouTube comments is sometimes it's a little bit of a minefield. People are a little bit rude sometimes. Oh, yeah. I got called Captain Greybeard today, which I don't <laughs> mind too much. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's one of the kinder comments. Uh, but if you engage in those conversations, they'll tell you exactly what they want. And then it, it makes it so easy for you to start to craft your content to serve a community, which becomes uh, at that point there another self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're serving what your audience wants, and YouTube recognizes that, well then YouTube starts to serve your video more and it's a rising tide. Everybody benefits and, uh, and, and we all, you know, you, you, it becomes a basis for a real business. Yeah. Plus, oh my gosh, you, you, know how, you know how dear uh, broadcast time is. You know, the 24 hour clock, fixed time, you know, we used to do two shows, I don't know what you do in the States, but in Canada, my, my, my half hour show was 22 minutes and 30 seconds That's of That's exactly the same here. That. And I had to hit that right on the mark, yeah. 22 minutes and 30 seconds, boom, hard, in, hard out. And uh, there was just no fudge factor. Um, and if a programmer moved you from Saturdays at 2 in the afternoon to Sundays at 11 in the morning, you lost your whole audience. Because well, yeah. you had no way of telling them. They had to find it yeah. in TV Guide or in some listing. Yeah. So there were just so many barriers for entry. But here... There is no barriers for entry. I mean, us doing this right now. Yeah. Could you imagine having a conversation like this on broadcast? The, 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 the airtime is just too valuable. The content that we're delivering for the community that's interested in is as valuable as anything any of the networks are going to deliver today. Yeah. But it's far more niche, and they couldn't take a chance at doing it. Right. And right. also... It's so prohibitively expensive to produce. Yeah, exactly. The sad, the saddest part of shifting from live, from uh, broadcast to online for me is is I get lonely. <laughs> I don't know about you, <laughs> but I get so lonely because every person that used to be part of my crew has been replaced by a USB port. Right? <laughs> it's, just, it's just all these, you know, all this technology. So it's it, so I don't get the energy from the people nearly as much, and that's that's the hardest thing. Although. In this day and age, as we're recording this, we're just in the early stages of the of the shutdowns from Corona. I guess it's a good thing. 
that we can still provide great content without having to bring people together in the same room. But I do miss that teamwork. I don't know if you do as well, but I really I, I do. I, I miss that. And uh, but but not as much. I mean, I, I, I'm OK. I, I you know, I, I do like being just totally in charge of my own space. And oh, as, yeah. you, as you just said, you know, that we're in the throes of this now and it, it's becoming more and more apparent one that we need this. I, I think a lot of people are learning lessons that they may apply to a recreation or reinvention uh, of what they can actually do. And, and we have, you know, somebody as enthusiastic and fun as you to learn from. <laughs> I wish I would have discovered you earlier. I wish I would have, <laughs> I, I, I really do. I, I just, I've, I've only talked to Steve Matt. Well, we've, I don't know, two weeks. We, 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 uh, officially met but I've yeah. already learned so much that I I wish I would have had a few years ago I think I'd be further ahead um, and I think that's one thing I want to you know tell our viewers of course a dotto tech uh, is your your primary challenge you have over 250,000 I think you're what coming up on 270 or something subscribers yeah. which is incredible mm -hmm. Uh, and then you start at Gray Matters which I think where you and I also are on the same that's page connected, yeah, yeah uh, well, uh, that's my passion project. So I'll tell you what happened there. So after building the Dotto Tech brand up back on YouTube and kind of figuring things out there, um, although I was building an online business, uh, and it's really important for all baby boomers to recognize that the social networks, often we think of the online space as belonging to millennials, and it doesn't. It's just, it, we, we have as much right there as anyone. It's just we haven't concentrated and we haven't been there in the formation of kind of as it's built. But that's, I mean, for me to be a, a kind of a, a gray haired fella that has built my career on YouTube and built a successful business, a bit of a unicorn. You know, people have heard of you, but they've never actually seen you in the, in the, in the wild. So I recognize that. Now, and to be honest, it was always a little bit of a badge of uh, honor. I, you know, I, 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 I'm proud of the fact that I was, that we did that. But even though I was building that marketplace, I didn't have the passion for the community. I did, you know, I took Marie Forleo's B school. I don't know if you've ever been through B school or, or you know, but I, the, I, I know, you know of her. I, I haven't taken. Okay. Yeah. Well, she talks about your, in the second lesson that you go through, and I did this years ago, like five years ago. The second lesson is discover your ICA, your ideal customer avatar. So this is a deep discussion of your why. Who is it you're building your product for? And I was building productivity stuff, how to use Gmail, how to use Google Calendar, how to use Evernote. And, and, and so for me, I always felt like a loser because I couldn't define who watched my show, who I was building my show for, who I had a passion to reach. I enjoyed helping everybody, but it was literally everybody. So every time I went through that exercise, I would feel like I am not a real online success story because I can't tell you who it is I'm making my videos for. And, I, and it drove me crazy. But then one day I had lunch with a buddy of mine and a guy from my past. He was, uh, in his day, he was a general manager of some of the high tech companies in Canada. He sponsored my show in several different iterations. And he was a gentleman who I believe was one of the best leaders I've ever met. Every single person who worked for him under, who worked under him flourished. They were successful. They were vibrant. He just, he's, he was just one of those managers. And we had lunch. He actually came out and visited me here in Ladner, and we were sitting at a sushi restaurant sitting outside. And this is only about 18 months ago, maybe 20 months ago. And he said, Steve, I'm struggling because I can't get a job right now. He says, I'm doing okay consulting, and I like consulting, but I really like leading a team. And so there's all these startups that I've been approaching, which I'm perfect for, and I can't get them to hire me. And because I'm too old, and he's younger than me. Mm-hmm. And it just hit me between the eyes like a two by four, because I, I have so much respect for him. So I said, well, Kev, what you gotta do is you just gotta do what I do. You've just gotta build your brand online and you gotta start like doing a YouTube channel or a podcast. And he said, well, I, yeah, that's you, I can't do that. And I went, why not? And he goes, well, and it was, and it was like, boom, the veil fell from my eyes. And I recognize, it, it, it's, and, and here's the thing about, I think when you find your ideal customer, if you are in the education space like we are, is it doesn't, it, it's not an opportunity suddenly presenting itself, it's responsibility suddenly rearing its head. That's and I knew right away that, oh my gosh, this is who I want to help. I And I've been given this gift of having success in this space, 
not because of anything great that I've done. I've stumbled. I mean, I've been lucky for the most part, stumbling into into the success. But now I've figured it out. I figured out what the touch points are, and I also figured out what our challenges are. And I thought that's who I have to teach. I have to teach baby boomers how to build online businesses and why social spaces are for them. And it's not going to be for everybody, but for those those of us that want to that want to want to pivot. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that it, once that happened. Um, over the next, over this last 18 months or so, other, all of the other pieces have fallen in place. But this is my passion project. I have to continue doing the YouTube channel in the productivity space because one thing I hate about t- online teachers is the people who make their money teaching you how to make money by teaching you how to make money. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. it just, it, to me, there's no credibility there. Uh, whereas if I can continue to build a vibrant business in the productivity space with online courses and building a community, then I can say, look, here's how I've done it, and I can teach it to you over here. So we launched to start that the Gray Matters podcast, which is uh, basically teaching baby boomers and Gen X. And I call them Boom X because so many Gen X share the challenges that we share now. Um, and uh, so I, so the teaching the Boom X generation uh, that the online world is theirs, that they can be relevant in this space, and they should be relevant. And not only can they be, they should be. They need to be relevant in this space. Well, and a lot of, you know, again, a lot of our viewers are are in the process of either needing or wanting, you know, to reinvent. They don't think they can do it. They, you know, it seems overwhelming. And mm-hmm. what I'd like to do is uh, hold you over for another segment where we discuss the launch of Gray Matters, what, what you've learned there, because it is a different space than tech. I think I think there's oh, for new, sure. yeah. I think there's other lessons there to to share, and you know why you know is YouTube friendly to us older folks <laughs> or not? So Steve, thank you so much for uh, for joining me. We'll again we'll see you on our next segment. Obviously, I will link to all of your information to your both of your channels, your website, and I encourage anyone uh, if anything that has resonated that you've heard so far, make sure you contact Steve and. He's, he's just a pleasure to deal with and uh, you're going to learn a lot. So thank you. Is there anything that you want to say before we uh, sign off and or can come back? No, that was awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. See you on our next segment. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. If there's a topic that you'd like to see us cover, please visit our website, secondact.tv. And we have a little red suggestion box in the upper right-hand corner of the site. Just click on that, drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time. Mm-hmm.